Hello and welcome to New York Comic Con's Metaverse event where we are continuing to break the fourth wall to bring convention entertainment to the comfort of your own home. I am Victor Dandridge, the hardest working man in comics, and it is my pleasure to bring to you Impossible Science with Jason Latimer. Hello, hello, hello. How are you today? I'm doing great. How are you doing over there? I am doing so, so well. Okay, let's let's run your accolades down right quick, okay? Two times you have won Magic's highest honor, the Grand Prix Best Overall World Champion of Magic. That's insane. Uh, you're curator of Impossible Science, a movement that unites magic and science to inspire curiosity and wonder in kids. Brilliant. And you have this awesome YouTube channel that we can do Impossible Science at home. Yes, absolutely. So I spent my entire life studying applied science to be the best magician I could be. And I used it to build illusions like bending light and shaping water and whatnot. And then uh, not that long ago, I started a program in museums that I said, wait a second, um, I don't have any superpowers. I've just <laughs> spent my entire life studying applied science to look like this. But if we flip the format of education around where you get right? something inspired by an impossible topic, I can use what I do know about science to show you how we could actually do it. Oh, my God. That's it, brilliant. Now, it, before you get into that, I think we have a little trailer so we can show that in action. Let's run that trailer right quick. Have you ever wondered what it would take to actually just bend light? Move an object with sound? Hey guys, it's Jason Latimer, the world champion of magic, coming to you directly from my home. What you just saw was a total illusion. Well, if you don't understand it, you probably would call it magic. Two, three. How the heck did you do that? The difference between magic and science was nothing more than a difference in understanding. Magic! No, it's impossible science. And you don't have to be a magician to do these at home. Oh! <laughs> Stay curious, because the right question changes everything. And together, we'll explore the impossible. Welcome to Impossible Science. Oh my God, my mind is blown. I <laughs> need this in my life like right now. Oh my God, oh my God. Okay, okay, okay. First and foremost, 2020 has been a crazy year. How are you doing through, you know, all the ups and downs of the year? You know, I was working up in Portland opening another Impossible Science with the Oregon Museum of Science and Industry. I came straight back into lockdown and rather, and we had a lot of shows canceled because mm -hmm. of obvious reasons. Right. But I started contacting all my museums trying to figure out what could we do for people that are stuck at home. So we immediately went into work. So I've never worked harder than my life. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> That's the way. <laughs> that is the way. Oh my God, that's so brilliant though. Okay, so when it comes to, you know, building illusions, building these concepts, I mean, are you a firm believer in in the unseen? Is that something that you have to do? You have to suspend your, your disbelief? That That's a really great question. So a lot of people ask me, how do I create magic tricks? Uh, and I a lot of people think I'm going after like, the elements of water, fire, light, right? right? That has nothing to do with it. Uh, <laughs> it has definitely nothing to do with it. I define magic as everything we don't understand. So if I can get well, something, say. yeah, so if I can get something to fundamentally change from what you think it should be able to do, uh, you tend to say, I don't understand that. And for right. that's how I define magic. But then I've taken that and manipulated that more into a direction for education, saying like our new cures, our new technologies, that's everything we don't understand. And so if you use the same thought process of a magician trying to build a magic trick, but right. apply it to a kid's education, now everything becomes a lot more exciting because impossible science is like the MMA of science. It's oh anything good. Just that like that is so brilliant. Oh <laughs> my God, that is so brilliant. I literally, I am pins and needles here um, because, okay, it sounds like you've got so many different parts and pieces. There's, there's, you know, actual applied science, there's psychology at play. How do you actually take the time to figure out the way these things work? Well, well, my parents never hugged me. And wow. Wow. No. <laughs> what a recipe. What a recipe. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, I just really enjoyed it. When I was going, uh, when I was climbing up the ranks of the, being in magic, I started saying, well, that's an interesting topic. I should see if I could use that in chemistry to apply towards a magic trick. Or that's an interesting topic in physics. I'll see if I can build that into magic trick. And when I won the Grand Prix at the World Championships of Magic, I was like, this is a great idea. I should just keep doing this. Yes. <laughs> like, yeah. And, and it became less about a sleight of hand move and more about applying different uh, 
sciences together. And then what happens is I found out that um, I found out that if you start mixing them together, you can start building this path that no one had ever seen before, and oh you get some God, really cool great. effects out of it. I love it. I absolutely love it. Okay, so when it comes to the your rankings in the world of magic, I mean, this sounds like a pretty big deal. I'm not saying like I'm you know full on into the magic world, but to say you know Grand Prix winner twice, uh, that's well, got to be a huge well, accolade. It, it, well, I can't really say Grand Prix winner twice. So what happens is there's different categories of the World Championships. There's six, and I okay. entered multiple at the same time, and I won multiple at the same time, and Genius then at the very movie. end, I won the title Grand Prix Best Overall. So I have World Championships and different titles and the title. Grand Prix. I think that absolutely counts. Like that's like <laughs> tip top Jedi status. Grand Prix. Like, yeah, absolutely. Did it come with a hat? It should have no. come with a hat. Did it come with a hat? No hat. No hat. No. Hat, we no. will get you a hat. That needs to happen. You you deserve a hat. Uh, okay. So if there's anyone that's that's younger that wants to get into pursuing magic as a career hobby, just a general interest, what's some advice that you would give them? Well, the first thing is don't get fooled by the illusion of knowledge. You will trick yourself into saying, I know the answer. I know everything. I know it's possible, so I don't need to learn anymore. And, and right now, in the age of information, the illusion has never been more deceptive. And, and so uh, that's the real trick is you will fool yourself. You are very easy to fool yourself. Um, and one of the real heart moments behind impossible science is, and this just goes out to anybody out there, not whether you're a kid or an adult, is uh, – it's never been a good idea in the history of human, humankind to rank ideas by popularity. It's never mm. worked out. It's never so worked true. out. So true. And we did it on a massive scale of likes, clicks, shares, and views. All right? right. And so the problem with that is a revolutionary idea, our new cures, those technologies we were talking about, those don't start off popular. So they fall right. to the bottom of a search result, and yet people keep grabbing from the top the most deceptive illusion, even if it's wrong or out of date. And by the time you realize it's wrong or out of date, You've just made it more popular to the next user. So every iteration, it gets more progressive. The magic, like literally, like the magic of philosophy even, you just applied to this. And, and you're so very right. I, I love that you are so forward-thinking and open-minded to say, hey, maybe look for the thing that's not as popular because that might be the, the solution. That's how Impossible Science got started. I, I gave a TED talk about the illusion of knowledge that's brewing in the age of information. I, I joked around, it takes a magician to spot it. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> like it, and I had this total, like, you know, uh, I think I have the tools that it, what it takes to make a difference in education. And so I started applying magic principles to science education. But the real point to get back to your, your, your question was we have to teach kids and ourselves to see mm -hmm. beyond what we know beyond our own answers. And that's oh how Impossible goodness. Science started. It's like, we're going to do topics like invisibility, levitation, mind control, animation. And now I've done it with stuff you can find in your house. Oh and my God. So, uh, so the first wave of Impossible Science at home is you'll never look at the objects in your house the same way. That's just that is absolutely true. Listen, I saw <laughs> the video of, of the, the center mass one and I'm looking at my broom now totally differently. <laughs> like I'm going to get in so much trouble before the end of this week. I can promise that because I'm going to be trying to balance everything. I thought I, there was one about um, four card, four cards for mind control. And uh, it's so funny because most people will, will say like, well, I don't have four cards. Take the time, go back and do the four card mind control because you'll end up fooling yourself. Wow. And now we, uh, I had, uh, I've had people, little kids write in saying that we showed it to their math teacher and they've spent the last week trying to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Now you have homework, Mrs. Johnson, take that. <laughs> Well, the funny part about it is that at the, one of them, I say, it works on math. That's why it works on your side of the screen. Right. Now, you can go back, write down the steps, and try to figure out the math, and you'll forever know how to modify it, make your own magic trick. Or you can go back, write down the steps, do not do not figure out the math, and you'll forever be able to do the trick, but you won't even understand why it works. That's awesome. So oh, you my get God. To, I love that. So you get to decide whether you're going to see magic or science in action. That's, oh. that's up to you. That is so brilliant. Okay, okay. <laughs> Rumor has it that we get to do a magic trick, and I am super excited about this. Yes, it uses uh, a water bottle okay. and, we actually, um, and a pen. So we're going to okay. take a pen. So if you open up, uh, oh, there's an envelope over there. Yeah, open that envelope there. Open this one. And grab, okay. and grab the pen out of it. My daughter set this all up, so I have no idea what I'm in store for. Did I get everything out of this? Okay, I think yeah, I Yeah, she's okay. the director of our covert activities right now. So you're going to take this pen. Yes. Okay. All right. And we're going to take it and we're going to push it inside this bottle. So it's going to look like this. Let me show you. Ready? Okay. One, two, three. 
sir, there's a, there's a pin in your bottle. How? Wait, wait. Go for it. <laughs> I, I feel I feel a little sheepish right now. No, no. Okay, so this this is a great principle about learning about refraction and how lenses work. So okay. when you go to like Impossible Science, so we have actual lessons. It's not tricky. There's a hidden rubber band somewhere. What we're going to teach you is about how light works. And in this case, we're going to talk about a convex lens, which if you turn a bottle sideways, it's the curved sides like this. The okay. Outer curve on this. When light's passing through a convex lens, it's not heading straight. It's actually bending, just like any lens. So it focuses, it diverges if it's uh, con, uh, concave, and it converges if it's uh, convex. And what happens is, in this case, the light is bending up. And um, here, it's bending okay. down, all right? And if I turn it sideways, what happens, oh, actually, right here, if you can see it right here, uh, there's a right. section that is invisible inside that bottle. Here, Victor, wow. in that section, is where the pen is right now. What? <laughs> wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. So, you mean it was, it was there the whole time and I just couldn't see it? Yes, exactly. If light doesn't, we see objects because light bounces off an object and hits our eye. So if we can prevent that light from hitting our eye by either bending it away or stopping it, the object becomes invisible. And in this case, we bent it away. I, okay. I'm, I'm, that was amazing. Yeah, that was so amazing. Open up the other envelope. Okay. Okay. Envelope and B. My daughter, she's so professionary. Look at this. Envelope B. Okay. It's very important to open it up in the right order because okay. that pen right there is now filled with paper clips. So it sinks. So open up the cap, drop the pen inside okay. it. Okay. We got that. Boom. Oh, wait. This is a fancy one. Oh, she gave me a fancy, fancy bottle. I believe in you. There we go. Okay. There we go. <laughs> Perfect. So, all right. The sink? It's, it looks like I kind of got to get it in there just a little bit more because I think there's still air in here. Oh, there's air in it then. Come on. Get, get down in there. You're almost there. Oh, no. Well, the other one is sink. It's not sinking. Uh, all right. Well, I'll tell it's you not what. heavy enough. I'll show you what's going on here. Okay. Yeah. So... What you do is you fill these pens up with paper clips so that they okay. actually sink because otherwise it'll float to the top. Now, it would kind of work if you just filled the bottle complete with water and it would just float to the Next top. Next time, I'm totally doing this. All right. And then what you do is you take that pen when it's in there and it falls like this. It's laying flat in that spot down here at the bottom. You can't see it. Right. That is ridiculous. All you have to do is then take a second pen when you have the second pen that matches. Now, you can either, if you don't want to do any sleight of hand, just put double-sided tape on this and stick it to your hand. Because all you have to do is go like this and then slap it against the bottle. And it looks like it just fell in there. Exactly. Oh my gosh. Okay. And then from that moment on, all you have to do is push this forward and your hand can drop. This will work great through online because it's there's no sleight of hand. It's actually just refraction at work. I am using this at family reunions from now on. Like, <laughs> Don't forget your four cards. Don't forget. <laughs> <laughs> You're absolutely right. Like I'm, I'm gonna have to like load up on a bunch of these. There's tons of experiments from like grabbing stuff on the table to make it look like you can move things with your mind. But you learn about resonance or static electricity. Everything is it's it's not one set of science. It's anything goes. And I love it. As long as we make the impossible possible through science. Oh my God! Listen, I am so encouraged, enthused. This is truly fantastic. I cannot wait to share this with not only just teacher friends, but like kids galore across like the universe. This is going to be so amazing. Uh, before we get out of here, is there anything that you want to say to all the fans that are watching? Oh, well, first of all, thank you so much for having me here. It's an absolute blast to be out here and spreading the word out this. Anybody who has kids, anybody who has teachers, we love your support. You know, this Impossible Science was limited to live events in Southern California and, and Portland uh, in Oregon. But now that we're online, uh, that this is just, just getting started. But we have tons and tons of experiments coming. And I'm just greenlit for the next 20 more on top of that. We have lesson plans coming out uh, that break it down so the kids and teachers can actually not only see the videos in classroom, they can actually apply them towards their next generation science standards. And so this is a museum program that of experiments you would have seen when you went there, except we've modified them for the stuff at your house. Oh my God, that's brilliant. That is so 
Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your time and your talent with all of us. Uh, a special shout out to New York Comic Con for bringing us together. Uh, remember, fans, you can watch all things Impossible Science on YouTube. Uh, we've got a full link that we'll do uh, down below here so you can check this out. It is so amazing. Over 8,000 subscribers already. Let's see if we can kick that sky high before the end of this weekend because it's so deserving. It's so amazing. Uh, I'm Victor Dangers, the hardest working man in comics, saying thank you to all the fans tuning in. Jason, you are incredible. The magic that you bring uh, just brought a huge smile to my face, dude. Thank you Victor. so, so very much. No, thank you. <laughs>